Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Tyler, and this is my tabletop. Today we are designing a ship for 3D printing for a billion suns. Uh, so what I have here is my light utility ship that I designed off camera. Uh, today we're going to design a lifeboat, uh, which is one of the objectives that you need to have. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, this is a modern day lifeboat. Um, we're going to use this as kind of the template theme, uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, and we're using my light utility ship so that uh, I know how big it needs to be, or roughly how big I want it. Uh, so what we're going to do, and this is being designed in Tinkercad, which is a free in-browser uh, CAD program that I use quite a bit for this kind of stuff. Um, and so uh, if you were starting from scratch, you wouldn't have the ruler. And so step one would be put a ruler down. There we go. Trying to figure out uh, the base, what shape I want it. Because I want to use like a round roof uh, for the top. Uh, I think I'm just going to use a rectangle. Uh, so with Tinkercad, uh, right now I have it set to uh, corner. But by putting the ruler on, I can... Uh, I make changes to where the box is and its size based on uh, referencing the ruler that I put down. So uh, so I made it, this is 10 mil uh, across, which is uh, I'm actually going to make it thinner. So we're going to make it two and a half mil thick. Uh, and then I'm going to put round roof. Uh, so it needs to be 10, negative 5. This is going to be 3 but I need to raise it by the 2.5 that I used for the other one. Uh, let's actually make this 2.5. Uh, okay, so now the next thing that you do with Tinkercad is select both objects and come up here and hit group. And now it will consider them one object. Now, if I wanted to go back and edit one of them separately, I can go up and ungroup. Uh, but we're just going to group this up. Okay, so now... Use like a paraboloid. Okay, so this one I want to rotate and... Rotate it 90 degrees. We're going to put this at negative 5 because this is going to be 10. Right, we're going to make this 5. This needs to be 20. And this obviously needs to be what, 5. And this is 0. Um. And uh, so the step thing is uh, the number of because uh, it's it doesn't actually make circles it makes uh, polygons uh, so you want to give it as many steps as it's allowed 
Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Okay, so... Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wedge. I'm going to use this wedge to do the other thing that you can do. So Tinkercad doesn't really function like a true blue uh, um, CAD program. You can't really do extrusions. Well, if you can, I don't know how. Um, but that doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do this. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is oh, I'm going to cut this out. Uh, so if I turn this into a hole, um, oops, there we go. Uh, first off, I need to make a copy of this before I let go of it, and it disappears into the abyss. There we go. Uh, five? Yeah. We want to copy this and rotate it. Uh, 2.5? Okay, now, if I combine the holes, it cuts out, like that. Um, although I don't actually like that. I think that that's too, uh, too long. This want, so this needs to be 17.5, and this needs to be 17.5 as well. There. Ta-da! Okay. Um. Okay, so we're going to put another box. Uh, we're going to make like a keel, I guess. It's like a... I'm going to put a 5. And this is going to be a negative 2.5. Uh, we're going to raise it up because it can be at like 3. It's going to go 5 high. Ooh, no. Go 4 high. Uh, there we go. All right, and then this is going to be at zero, and this is going to stop at 17.5, and then I'm going to do a wedge. Actually, uh, what I'm going to do is, so I can move them just together, I'm going to use... Uh, that's going to be a pain in the butt. So, this is... Wait, what did I say this was at? It's at 3, and it's 3 high. So, 3... 3... Uh, this needs to be 3 as well. And then this is 5. And this needs to be negative 2.5. And then this needs to be 17.5. Ta-da! There. Okay, now combine. Okay, so now it has a keel. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to put some, uh, like, engine nacelles. Some kind of engines. Uh, something like this. I think I'm going to put a pair of them. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two of them. Or I'm going to make one and then I'm just going to copy it. So let's make this. Is this the right? 
sell three, three, and one. No, uh, let's make this two. Okay. Uh, so the next thing we're going to make is a parabola. Um, it's going to sit there. It needs to be three, three, and three. And it needs to be, where is this one? This one is at negative 26. So this needs to be negative 26. And this one is at negative 11 so this needs to be negative 14 uh actually this needs to be negative 13. uh so i could have gotten away with doing it at negative 14 but uh you saw well here i'll show you um so that's all well and good but you can see that the contact point is technically very, very small. And I know from experience that that will not print on my 3D printer. So plug it in a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a parabola hole that is slightly smaller than uh, the parabola that I'm working with here. Uh, so it needs to go up by... 0.5 and let's make it 2 and so it needs to be negative 13 uh, negative 26 negative 26 and make it a hole oh uh, negative 25.5 there we go okay so we're going to combine those together into one part. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to where I want it. Uh, I'm just going to move it to here and then I'll do fine adjustments. Uh, um, I'm actually just going to move this a little. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Okay, now I'm going to copy it and put it negative 2.5 uh, 1.5 so it's 4.5 away from the center so negative 4.5 there okay combine all right uh, so the general shape is done now um, it looks fine. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some, uh, some details. So like these ribs on the light utility ship, they're really only there to catch wash when I wash the part down in the edges. Um, so I'm going to add some stuff at the, on the top just to uh, give my wash, uh, so this needs to be 0.5 mil, and it needs to be at 6. Actually, let's do 0.2 mil. Um, so the other thing I know is that my uh, 3D printer can handle uh, hey, so when you're doing this kind of design, you need to pay attention to what your uh, printer can do. Uh, it's important that you know. Um, where's this going to be? The resolution of your printer. Uh, that's very important, obviously. Um, if you don't know your resolution, you are not going to have a good day. Okay, so you can see that this is just a little up, and it'll print on my 3D printer, so uh, I should be all right. We're going to put this at 10. No, we're going to put this at 12. There. 
Oops. Okay. Um, let's combine those. And then... Ha! Huh. I don't actually remember... How I did... The round roof. Let me look at a... I think it'll be all right. Um, I think this is what I'm gonna go with. Uh, so my plan is to paint it that vibrant orange, so we'll see. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete the light utility ship so that I can export. So for a 3D printer, uh, I use .stls. Not every printer does, but um, give me a second and I will actually uh, let me pull up uh, to box. We will pull up the. Okay, so here I'm printing pieces for my carriers. Uh, downloads, lifeboat. Okay, so uh, this is Chittabox. This is what I use to print on my resin printer. Uh, you can see. Uh, this is the uh, build plate for my 3D printer. Um, I would like to print all of them. Uh, so for those of you who haven't used a resin printer, uh, it's the height that matters, not the total number. So like, uh, here, I'll show you. So I'm going <laughs> to... Uh, we're just going to auto uh, strut. Let me see. All right, now if I hit slice, uh, you'll see that it's, it's going to take about four hours. Now watch this. Um, you'd think that if I added... Um, Select all, center, there we go. You'd think that by adding, you know, four more, I would change how long the print takes. Nope. Uh, so that's that's a big difference than on the uh, tangent time on 3D printers. That's a big difference between a resin printer and an FDM printer, which is like the the kind you see that deposits material. Uh, with those printers, it's the amount of material, the volume of the print itself that decides how long the print takes. Well, that's the big consideration. You know, uh, your resolution yada, and other factors account for that too, but it's the print volume. For this, it's the height because this uses, so, We'll show you. I'll show you. Um, so the print would start. Um, it shines the. So the resin is. Uh, the resin is UV setting. And so my printer has a build plate that it sticks down in to a vat of resin. And underneath that vat is a uh, an LED screen that uh, that produces UV light. And so what you're seeing over here is what you LEDs are actually going to light up on my screen to print this layer. And then uh, it'll give it'll fire for a couple of seconds, and then the build plate will lift up, and it'll do the next layer. And then the next, 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 next. 
on and on and on and on and on. And it takes, uh, depending on what you've got it set at, mine are set to about 8 or 10 seconds. It depends on the resin. I think I've got them set at 10 seconds per layer. So it shines it for 10 seconds and then it lifts up. So you can see we're already on layer 350, and we haven't even hit the part itself. This is just the supports. Um, and it just keeps going. There we go. So I'm going to save this uh, so I can find it again. Um, and I'll test this out. Uh, so that's going to wrap us up for now. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I, I hope you liked this little, something a little different. Um, if you liked it, please like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm Tyler, and this has been my tabletop.